Monster Gardeners, welcome back to Tip of the Week. Hang in there with us, this one's a little bit of a long one. We're gonna be talking about how to properly size an AC and what all that entails. I ain't mad at you. I am but love for you. So there are a couple different situations in which you would want to use an air conditioner. Paramount among them would be if you're trying to run a sealed room setup utilizing CO2. If you are utilizing CO2, you don't want to be exhausting that air except for maybe during the dark part of the photo period for the first 30 minutes, as this is when plants tend to respire a lot and you will get a lot of uh, humidity spikes this way. So having a purge fan or burping the room after the lights go out if you are running AC is a great idea. Um, properly sizing an AC is also very important. It has a lot to do with the size of the room, how many lights, the environment in the outside, no matter how well insulated your room is. People are in hotter climates need to account for a higher BTU rating. This is pretty easily calculated. The standard single-ended lamp without the ballast puts off about 3,500 BTUs, the ballast adding another two gram. So if you have the ballast inside the room, that's gonna bring your total up to 5,500 BTUs. That's for a single-ended fixture, not air-cooled. A uh, double-ended fixture puts off somewhere around the neighborhood of 6,500 BTUs. It's also important to note that sizing your AC, it's always a good idea to make it a little bit bigger than you think you need to accommodate for those hot days in the summer. A lot of people don't realize that. Another thing is that the placement of the air handlers in the different locations around the room is paramount. You want to have it evenly dispersed throughout the room. So if you are using a split type system or you have multiple units and zones, you need to make sure that the spacing is done properly so that it's cooling the entire room and not just portions of it. So this is also leading to where to put your thermostat. So most people just have the thermostat mounted on the wall like at your home, but you'll notice a lot of these sophisticated systems and environmental controllers actually come with an extension cord. This is intended to be hung at canopy level because this is where it is most important that you get that cooling down. Uh, the cooling needs to be at the canopy level, not at the wall or near the wall handler, or the air handler, I should say. Uh, the other thing is that you need to take into account for your dehumidifiers. Your dehumidifier should not be on the same side of the room as your AC, as these two things are gonna fight each other. And the air conditioner also does a little bit of dehumidification on its own. That's part of the process through the refrigerant that it uses, it actually pulls moisture out of the air. Um, you have two choices in terms of ducting, like if you're doing a package unit where the actual condenser is outside the room, you can use fabric ducting, which is what I would recommend because it's a lot easier to clean. Um, it can be a lot more sterile. You can get things like colloidal silver put into it. Uh, we work with a company called Virgin Air that actually custom makes duct, fabric duct systems for your room that can do under canopy, below canopy. It's great for air management and keeping the airflow moving. Rigid ducting has its place as well, but the most difficult part about rigid ducting is that it's difficult to clean. Um, it's hard to get a scrub brush inside of there to keep everything completely clean and free of mold and dust and mildew and all these sort of things. So I would recommend if you're going to be doing hard ducting that you look into something like the Element Air, which actually has a UV filter that you can stick inside the hard ducting so that all the air that is growing by gets sterilized by that UV light. UV light kills mold spores, pests, pathogens, bacteria, all kinds of things. So it's a great addition to your system and it'll save you some headaches down the road. Now, having an AC and replacing the filter as you should, which is at least every six months, just like your home furnace, is very important because these filters are what actually trap the dust and mold particles and things like that. So the better the filter you have, it will lower the CFM rating a little bit, but it'll catch more stuff. So a HEPA filter is going to catch a lot more than your plain standard paper filter will. This is important to note, especially in areas that are very humid because the mold spores collect inside of the paper filter and then they start passing through. So again, the UV sterilizer. Um, rigid ducts also are easier to permit in a lot of places because they are static and they are hard mounted to the ceiling, whereas a fabric duct uses a series of cables. Um, but again, a lot easier to clean. So something that's also important to note that a lot of people don't take into consideration is that if you are potting up inside this room and you are a person who's growing in soil, you're gonna to need to change the filter a lot more often because those soil particles are gonna get into the air and they're gonna clog your filter. So it's gonna slow down your dehu, it's gonna slow down your AC. Now, on the flip side of that coin are evaporative coolers. Evaporative coolers use an entirely different method to cool. They don't use a refrigerant, they actually use water. Uh, they're often referred to as a swamp cooler. 
The problem with these, if you're not in a dry area, like say the desert of Arizona or the plains of Colorado, something like that, if you're not in a dry climate, you're gonna have to oversize your dehumidifier to compensate for that fact because you're putting more moisture into the air. Essentially how a evaporative cooler works is it has a series of fans and pads. And as the water travels over the pad, the air travels through it and that's how the cooling is done. It's basically just putting more moisture in the air and cooling the room down. Um, warm air is very important to note because warm air holds a lot more moisture than cold air does. So if your room runs particularly warm, you're going to need a bigger dehu. And some rooms and some strains are able to handle this, but not all. So it's important to note that depending on the climate that you're in, the ambient temperature outside as well as inside your room can affect your relative humidity and the temperature inside the room. Um, most ACs, all I should say, pull a little bit of moisture out of the air some more than others. So it's important to note that although it does do some dehumidification, it's always good to have a backup dehumidifier as well so that your AC isn't running all the time. And again, oversizing it ensures that your AC isn't running all the time, which will increase its longevity. Uh, there are all-in-one units that do dehumidification and AC. Uh, there's some huge units. Uh, one of them is called the Trifecta. There's a number of other ones that you can get in the traditional HVAC space. Uh, most of these units though require uh, installation by a professional HVAC uh, installer contractor. So those ones don't come with pre-charged line sets like the Excel ones do and some of the ideal airs that make it so that you can install this system yourself. Um, changing your filters, that's a big one. Again, people don't think about that. They just keep running on the same filter and they wonder why it is the airflow is slowing down. Again, it's getting plugged up. So if you just follow these simple guidelines, size your AC correctly, you'll be having a lot less headaches in summertime. And uh, trust me, that's the last time you want the temperature in your room to rise. Just a quick calculation for you guys. I know you see on a lot of the labels that AC units are marked by tonnage and BTUs. So the simple way to convert BTUs to tonnage is to take the number of BTUs and divide that by 12,000 and that'll get your ton rating. So if you have a ton rating of, let's say you do the calculation and it's 1.2 tons, don't go with a one ton system. Go with at least a two so you have that redundancy there and you don't have to worry during those hot months of summer. Thanks for tuning in, Monster Gardeners. Join us in the conversation below. Leave some comments, let us know what you think. Thanks for tuning in.